What's up? I'm John Huertas. Uh, you may have seen me on uh, HBO's Generation Kill and then ABC's Castle, but hopefully you're now seeing me in music videos and on tour and singing my beautiful, amazing songs from my album, Grown and Sexy Music. Uh, and let's talk about happiness. Happiness uh, is about um, enjoying life and uh, understand that life is an amazing uh, gift uh, and to not to be happy is to not waste it um, do uh, for me being uh, the way I make myself happy is I just do everything that I've ever wanted to do I try it if I suck at it I suck at it if I don't uh, I'll be, you know, I'll, I'll continue to do it, um, but, uh, you know, happiness is just not wasting time in my life, so I'm doing music, I'm doing, I'm acting, I'm doing what I've, uh, you know, what I grew up dreaming about, um, and so uh, I'm happy, I mean, uh, you know, I don't have to make money to be happy, uh, as long as I'm, I'm eating, uh, eating makes me happy, uh, as long as I'm eating, as long as I'm uh, and doing what I love, um, then, then I'm happy. I was, I was always a happy kid, um, so uh, for the most part, positive. I, I feel like if I'm positive, then I'm happy. If I, I, liked, I like to think that whatever you put out is what you get back, so I try to put out, you know, being positive. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, if I see somebody doing something really cool, really good, or they're talented, I'm going to let them know. I'm going to tell them, like, and, and, you know, give them, um, you know, compliment, give them, uh, uh, you know, kudos on... Yo, man, that was awesome. That's good. You look good. Whatever. No, it's always so that hopefully that comes back to me. And so, um, you know, I feel like uh, when I was younger, uh, when I would, you know, was trying to decide what do I want, what do I want to be, I always had a hero complex. Uh, so, you know, I thought maybe cop, fireman, military, uh, but then I also had this affinity for performing and acting. And so, um, uh, I feel like you know people. When I would try the acting thing, people would always give me uh, compliments on, on what I was doing. And, and for me, I was just having fun and, uh, and you know, just, just, I like making people laugh. And so, um, you know, I think uh, growing up, I was, you know, you, you don't believe that being a, a professional entertainer is, is attainable when, you, when, you, when you're a little kid. And then you also have like, you know, you have your parent, parental figures and, and grown-ups like, uh, you know, sometimes counselors at school, you got, have no, they have no, uh, no belief in you. And they try to say, you know what, maybe you should go into architecture uh, or maybe you should, go, you know, be a lawyer or something like that. Uh, and, and uh, you know, so, so you're being told, you know, eh, I don't know about the acting thing, I don't know about the singing thing, you know. You know so for me, it, was, it seemed unattainable, but... There were always those people, those kids in my class, in my high school class, that were saying, "Man, you should, you should definitely like pursue acting. You should definitely." So, uh, you know, I went to I went to college. Uh, didn't really wasn't didn't really work out my first year. So, that hero complex took over, and I was like, you know, I'm gonna go in the I'm gonna go in the military, but at the same time, I'm gonna study acting. Why? Because you know, the, you, you, the military gives you an opportunity towards a higher education. I mean, they they. When I was in, they paid for 75% of any state college university as long as you were active duty and you kept a B average. So I thought that was easy. I'll keep B average and I'll, you know. So it did take me eight years to finish three years of college, but, uh, I, you know, I was in for eight years, but it, but it allowed me to satisfy that hero complex, which I was super happy uh, about, about that because I was able to kind of follow in the footsteps of a lot of the males in my family, you know, that had done that, you know, that... Um, that coming of age, uh, military service, um, you know, uh, so then, but then also while I was in the military, you know, you're, you're in, you're, you're studying musical theater. I'm studying musical theater in the military. Um, I'm doing a play. I'm doing Camelot musical. So in Camelot and in, in theater, uh, you know, I'm not wearing, uh, like shiny armor as, uh, as a, as a nice lot. I'm wearing, uh, tights, like in, in, in theater in college, if you're gonna do if you're gonna do Camelot, you're gonna be wearing tights. So I literally had to ask all these guys I was serving with in the military to come out and see my play 
and see me wearing tights. And you know, there's that whole thing with the, you know, you, you know, the uh, people might question your manhood or your warriorhood if you're dancing around on stage wearing tights and singing. Uh, but you know, also when you're playing Lancelot, you get the girl. So I also got the girl, and she was pretty hot. So um, uh, all these military guys supported my career. They they came out, they saw me in tights, and they, I mean, these guys were howling with just um, support, not laughter. I mean, they were like, they were laughter when they were supposed to, because we made it funny. But, I mean, these guys were so supportive, clapping, and, and I'll tell you the, 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 the story for me uh, that means almost kind of the most to me is there was a, uh, I, I didn't grow up with a, with a father figure for the most part, for, for a big part of my life. Um, and I uh, uh, had this guy, Lou Monopoly. He was a, um, a supervisor of mine, a higher ranking individual uh, that I was um, stationed with. And he was like a father to me. Uh, he kind of, you know, uh, guided my career in the military and then he also, he would, a big supporter of my entertainment career. And he came to a show, and after the show, he had the playbill, the program. And he said, hey man, uh, I want you to sign this. Because one day you're going to be famous, and I want to have your autograph now, because I don't know if I'll be able to get it later, and this might be worth money one day. So uh, I was like, man, you're so stupid, get out of here. So you know, he was like, seriously, sign it. All right, and I signed it, you know, early on. And uh, years later, um, you know, he, he ends up retiring out of the military, early 90s. I finish my military career, I come out here, I start working, uh, you know, for me there was no like, like big break, like my big break was my first job, the first thing I booked. Um, you know, most actors don't have a, like that big break, they have, you know, they, they guest star on things, they, they get a series that doesn't go, they, you know, they do movies here, do movies there. Um, so I've been doing all that and uh, once Facebook came out, uh, or I think it was MySpace back then, uh, Lou Monopoly actually got an account and he found me, reconnected, and we would you know, message back and forth. And he's like, hey man, I saw that little movie you did, or I saw that, that TV show you were doing, uh, I saw that guest star. And he would always give me a little love. And um, uh, one day I'm, I'm producing my first uh, feature film, well, actually my second. I try to forget the first one I did. Uh, I, I produced my second film uh, as, as a co-producer, we were shooting in Austin. And uh, I was really excited. It was a great little movie, great little script. And, uh, and we're shooting on location in Texas. And I knew Lou lived in Fort Worth, Texas. And he was, you know, that's where he was living out of his retirement, uh, working for the post office. Um, so he, you know, I, I hit him up and I said, hey, man, we, would, would you come visit me down in Austin? I don't know how, if you have the time, if you could drive down from Fort Worth. But I'm down here and I'd love to see you. I haven't seen you in, you know, almost... 18 years or whatever it was and so uh, he's like yeah I'll be down there and bring the wife and they come down they meet me at my hotel uh, I come down from my room they're in in front of the hotel um, waiting in the car I get in the car I sit down I go, and I start to give him directions you're gonna go out the parking lot you're gonna make a left he's like wait before we leave I just want to I want to show you something and he pulls out a Ziploc bag it was like an evidence bag and there's that program and he pulls it out and he goes do you remember this he goes, I knew that one day you were going to do this and you were going to be famous. And I was like, I really wasn't famous, but, you know, I was working. And to him, I was famous because he can see me on television or in a movie theater. Uh, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty tough dude. You know, uh, I call myself a warrior. I like to live the warrior lifestyle. When he showed me this program, I think I started blubbering like like a baby, like, because <laughs> it was like this guy who I looked at like a father had this, this program and he had been supporting me from day one when I said, I want to be an actor one day. When I'm a young troop in the, in the, uh, in the Air Force, you know, I want to be an actor one day. And he, you know, he supported me and, and that, that is, that was probably the happiest moment in my life in regards to this career is when he had that program that, that 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 playbill that he had had me sign and one of my first things I ever did uh, and you know brought it back around 15 years later after I you know I, I'm now you know living the dream and, and having success in my life it was literally the happiest moment 
in my career so far. I mean, I think uh, no matter what, you can win awards, you can get great jobs, but that moment right there was the most, I mean, it's, I've never been so happy and felt so supported and felt so, you know, so much love, you know. I'll tell you, but like right now, the number one song that, that to me is a, is, a, is a song that makes me happy is uh, Bruno Mars, um, uh, the Lazy Song. Today I don't feel it. Like the, today I don't feel like doing anything. Like that first line is. That's how. That's that's. I'm happy on Saturday morning when I don't have to do anything, and I and I like you know definitely take that thing. I, I will just you know on some Saturdays I'm like I'm not doing anything today, and that song and I'll blast it. I will wake. It's, actually, it's my alarm song. It's my, it's on my phone when I wake up in the morning. It's that song, the lazy song. That's that's the number one song right now that makes me happy. Um, there's uh, Pentatonix. Uh, they have they've covered um, Gangnam Style. Uh, now I didn't even like I didn't love Psy's version of that's how you say his name, right? Psy, P E S Y. Uh, I didn't like his version of Gangnam Style. I, and the whole phenomenon of it, I was like, yeah, whatever, cool. But Pentatonix cover, sick. Like these, first of all, Pentatonix, I can't even stress enough how dope they are, They're, the way they arrange their songs, and just their vocals are sick. Um, but their version of Gangnam Style, that makes me happy. Like I would put that on in the car, and I would drive around this, because you know, in LA, if you're driving around, traffic is crazy. That'll take it out of you, that'll take the happiness out of you. But if you're listening to Pentatonix Gangnam Style, uh, it doesn't, you, you can't see the traffic and you're happiest, and then when, but other people see you because I'm singing along with Gangnam Style in my car, windows down, blaring. Uh, so that's another song that makes me happy. Let's see, what else? Um, uh, I, I tell you what, man, uh, Alicia Keys, um, her song, uh, uh, She's Just a Girl, a Girl on Fire, like that song, uh, it just reminds me of my girl, so like, you know. It, like everything she's she's talking about in that song reminds me of my girl. So uh, that song makes me happy, and I'll be and I'll and I'll sing along about that one too, especially that 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 fire. I would just sing along with it, and I and I actually like. I mean, I've said this a couple of times actually in this interview. I like being at a stoplight and singing along. And a lot of people like when they're at a stoplight and they're singing along to a song and belting it out, and people look over at them, they freeze, and they're like, you know, and they try to pretend like they weren't singing. I will look someone dead in the eye. And sing right to them. Fire! She's just a girl and she's on fire. And those and the people in the car next to them just roll up their window. What the what's wrong with this guy? It's I, I love it. I think it's great. But sometimes they like they get a big smile on their face, you know, and then they it makes them happy. They're trying to you know Pandora, that, not Pandora. What's the thing? Uh, Shazam it. What is that song? Shazam that. Can you just sing that for me again? What the? Pretty, pretty. Uh, it's it's pretty infectious that song. Um, let's see, any other songs that uh, have that are, that I have to play on my? Uh, and then my, I mean, yeah, my songs make me happy because they're I've accomplished something, you know. And when I listen to my songs, and literally since I'm getting ready to go out and do uh, these dates, these 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 shows, uh, I haven't been listening to much else because I. I've got to get I've got to get ready for my show, so I'm just like you know constantly saying what am I gonna do live in that part of the song because you know I gotta make sure my voice is there after doing five songs whatever so uh, yeah those are the songs that I think I frequent the most. I want I did this thing called Generation Kill an HBO miniseries and um, uh, while it, we shot in Africa for eight months and so while I was out there you know we're hanging with like 30, 35 guys every day and that's that's. The cast is a lot of people, um, and uh, we'd go out to these small little bars, and sometimes some people go to clubs, some people go to. I would go to these jazz bars with some of the guys, and there was an old, you know, an older, like I think he was like 80 years old, uh, pretty famous um, jazz singer, Portuguese. He comes from Portugal, and you know, Latin jazz in Brazil, Portugal, and now Mozambique. Mozambique is like the Portugal of Africa. It was a Portuguese colony. So um, uh, he gets up on stage and he's, you know, at this little, this really cool venue, and we're in there, and I don't know how it happened. We, you know, singing around the guys a lot, playing around. Somehow one of these guys 
told this dude that that guy's a great, you know, he can sing, you should, you know, whatever, without me knowing it. And he called, the guy, old guy calls me up on stage. And he, you know, we sing the song. And then like, you know, uh, and then we do another song. And then he asked me to come back, the, you know, uh, three nights later or something like that, I'm doing another thing. Will you come, get up on stage? You know, I had a great time. It's, and like the, the trade off, the back and forth, it was a lot of fun. So we, I did that. So then a uh, couple of the guys um, that were in the cast, when we get back here, they set me up with this guy saying, hey, he's, a, you know, he's got a little production company. He's doing music with this sick ass artist named uh, Beach Boy. So uh, you know, why don't you link up with him? Maybe you can talk about maybe getting back into the music business. Come down to the studio and watch Beach record. I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. I'll come, you know, I don't have anything to do tonight. I'm gonna go down there and watch Beach record, meet this dude, see what's up. Maybe I'll think about getting back into the music business because I hadn't been, I, you know, years ago I was in the music, you know, playing with the music business a little bit and got a, did an album, got shelved, and you know, got a bad taste in my mouth. And then uh, um, we, we're on our way down to the studio, and uh, Vic Manzano, who's now I'm actually he's my business partner, he uh, he's playing me the type of music they're doing, and these are these are some of the tracks from the producers we have signed, and and he's playing these tracks, and it was one track, it was I was like, well, that's jazz, that's sick, I like that. Who's, who's this dude? And uh, his name is, is Frequency, Freak, Freak Beats out of New York. And so uh, I was like, yo, this track is sick. And then I just started like kind of freestyling over the track. And they were like, yo, that's crazy. Yo, uh, yo, when we get down there, I want to show, let's show Beach what you just did. So we get down there and I meet this kid Beach Boy and his, his stuff is really sick. And then uh, uh, I, they play the track, do whatever I was doing over it, sex is the word. And then uh, they, uh, yo, Beach was like, yo, that's, that's, I love that hook, yo, let's, Let's collab. Let's write. Let's write on this right now. I'm like, I mean, no. I mean, I, you're, this is your session. I don't want to come down and like, you know, you just do your thing. No, no, no. I like this. I'm gonna do this. So we collabed right there. Literally recorded it that night, two hours. And then uh, I like, you know, I, I like the track. I was like, this is kind of cool. So then uh, Vic's trying to get me to get into the music business. All these people are like, yo, you should do this. And I'm like, I don't know, man. You know, I got, I'm on the show. It's, I'm get busy. But they, they, your fans might like the, the music, man. So I said, then I'll do a test. I'll shoot a little video, put it out there, and see what people think. If they think that I suck, I'm gonna stop right away, and I'm not gonna do any music. But if nobody hates on it, then I'm gonna do it. So I put it out there. Uh, we got you know a lot of you know we got an amazing response on iTunes. You know the downloads were crazy. Uh, people loved it. Uh, you know, I'd get a, I'd get a tweet from somebody in Australia. I'm walking through the mall. Sex is the words playing over the mall speakers. I'm like, really? And like all this, like, so if, if that's the kind of response I'm gonna get, then I'm gonna get, you know, I'm gonna go full steam ahead and and do a real project, do a real album, find some great producers to work with. And that's how I found Christian Davis. And uh, we, I mean, the 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 relationship we have as far as uh, co-writing together, him producing my stuff. Uh, his songwriting abilities are amazing. Uh, exactly what I'm looking for, so was looking for. So um, I think you know, you know, he and I will be working together for a long time. And, and the new project is this. I mean, it's the kind of music that I want to listen to. I feel like I feel like I can. I, I, I feel like an ass because I'm like always driving around listening to my own shit. Because it's it's like to me it's like good. It's like the kind of music I want to listen to. If it wasn't me, I'd be listening to it still. You know. Um, but then I do feel like an ass because I pull up to a stoplight and I'm like singing to this shit. People, y'all, whose track is that? What is that? I'm like, oh, that's me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> you know, the first time I was in the business was also an accident. Yeah, I, I came out here to be an actor first and foremost. But I came out after, you know, doing my training, if you will, in musical theater. Like, I, I've been singing since I was a little kid. Um, you know, so I, I fell right into the musical theater realm because I wanted to be an actor. And like, you know, you're in school. They're doing, you know, in, like in high school, they're always doing musicals. Um, and then, uh, so then, you know, I get to college and go into a theater program. It's, you know, a musical theater program, and I like, and, I, and so music and, and, uh, and, and, and acting and dance all, you know, they all came in one package for me. So uh, when I got out here, I was like, you know, you, you get an opportunity to audition for uh, a music video as a dancer. You have an opportunity to audition for a television show. I have another an opportunity uh, to audition for a vocal group. Because um, uh, back then, vocal groups were kind of the thing. You know, Boys to Men uh, had set it off, and there were all these other little groups after them. And then, uh, you know, I was actually at an audition for a movie, and uh, Selena, and uh, it was down to a couple of us guys. And I got 
asked by this kid that was like in the audition with me, like in the waiting room, you know, hey man, you sing? Because I'd been, you had, to, you had to be ready to show your musical talent. And so uh, uh, I was warming up my voice. And so um, he, uh, he said, you sing? And I was like, yo man, don't talk to me right now. I'm getting ready for my audition. What's wrong with you? And uh, afterwards, after my audition, uh, I came out and he said, will you wait for me after I do mine? I would like to talk to you about something, about an opportunity. So he comes back out and says, yo, I got this, we got this vocal group, we have a production deal, um, one of the guys dropped out, um, so we're looking for another guy. We got all these label meetings, like literally like next week, week or two weeks or something like that. And, I, and he goes, I would love to bring you in. And so I went in, met with the producers, the rest of the group, we vibed, sang, boom, got in the group, boom, did, uh, you know, got a deal, recorded an album, Spent all this time and energy. Took myself out of uh, out of the acting game for a minute, right there. Just just you know, cause to focus on this and uh, and then you know, boys, they're not boys to men. Uh, Backstreet Boys came back from Germany and they had an amazing show. I mean, they were like, you know, uh, you know, their vocals were tight, but then also they could they were all over the stage dancing uh, and, I, and I just had a great show. Had a huge following already, and so uh, we were asked, you know, do you guys dance? And I danced, but not everybody in the group danced. So our shows weren't as dynamic as like, our shows weren't. You know, we started doing some spot dances. They weren't as dynamic as Backstreet Boys. And so um, I guess they saw that we weren't going to be able to to sell like the Backstreet Boys did. So they shelved the record. And I was like, man, you know, spent all that time, took myself out of the acting game, and uh, you know, and, and then nothing came about um, just because someone didn't trust that our music was good enough or whatever, I don't know. But so I was like, I was like, oh, you know what, I'm not going to I'm going to focus on the acting. Uh, I, you know, at least if I fail and I, if 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 nobody watches me when I'm acting, it's my fault because I'm not you know, uh you know, I'm not good enough, I'm not exciting enough, I'm not I'm not you know, uh I don't have that thing that makes people watch that scene or that you know, project that I'm in. So I, I would rather blame myself than try to blame and worry about blaming other people. So that's, that's what happened uh, the first time. Now, I think since then, the music business has changed so much. Because back then, like, it was all, like, you needed that label. You needed that production deal and that label deal and all that. Because, to, to, you know, we didn't have money. We recorded on, on tape. I mean, it was, like, it was still analog, like, three-quarter inch back then. Um, uh, once the digital music age came about, suddenly anybody can make a record. And anybody can make a record that sounds better than what we were recording back in you know, the early 90s, whatever. Uh, so, um, you know, the second time, the fact that we were able to, that I was just singing along to a track in a car, and I was able to record an entire song in like two and a half hours with, with you know, in a, in a studio. Uh, it was, it was that, it's, it opened everything up for me again. I was like, wow, you know, it's like, I don't have to spend, I don't have to take so much time away from the acting to be able to do music. Like I did before. Like now, it's I can actually like the music is a hobby, and I don't have to spend. I'm not spending nearly as much money because it is. You know, everybody has a studio. You know what I mean? Uh, and and you get somebody tracking you. I mean, you start singing. You start singing through a line of the song. They just hit stop. Do that again, and you know, try this. Uh, you 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 went you went flat here. You went sharp here. Whatever. You know, it's like it's like it's like it's instant. Go right back get that line, you, you go through a whole verse, they go, you know what, we like everything except this line, we're gonna go back, we're gonna punch it, and it's like, what? It's, it, it all happens so fast, so uh, it's, it's that much easier for me to focus on my acting 100% and put another, you know, the rest of my 100%, 100% there's 200% in my life, 100% um, on acting, 100% on music, you know, uh, I can kind of balance it pretty well, so I think, you know, um, that's what made me get back into the, in the music game is that, you know, that, that ease, um, of digital recording, it's like you know, just like digital filmmaking, what we're doing right here, right now, and these uh, digital cameras. Uh, you know, it's like so much easier for you know people to 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 get in and to, and to kind of crack the code. Because it used to be this code, this secret world, the music business, the secret world like TV and film. Uh, now you know people can get in there. You know that, that would never have had an opportunity before. I mean, you know. Here's what I've learned about my, myself um, doing, you know, um, you know, it, it, whether I'm doing act, whether I'm, whether I'm acting, doing a television show, doing a movie, doing music. Um, 
I think I've learned that I, I pretty much will not quit and that I don't have a fear uh, of trying anything, even if I suck. I mean, there, you know, there are certain things I shouldn't do. I've found out. I'm not going to tell you guys, but um, there are things that I should not try and do. So, uh, but you know, there's that no fear, uh, never quit attitude that I think I got from the military. And that's, I think that's what I've learned the most is that even though I've been, I've been out of the military for, um, you know, 18 years. So, but that everything, everything about me, I mean, I spent eight years in the military, but, um, that was enough to really, um, instill a sense of uh, discipline, initiative, uh, no, a, a no quit, no fear type of, uh, well not no fear, fear, I have fear, right? fear kind of drives you and keeps you um, um, constantly readying yourself for what could possibly happen. Um, and I'm not talking about like some apocalypse or some shit like that. I'm talking about like, you know, if, if you do suck at this, what, you know, it, it prepares you for, you know, you might suck and how are you going to deal with it? Uh, so, uh, you know, I think that that, um, you know, it's, that's what I've learned is that I, I've, I've retained all that um, and I apply it to, to the business. And I think when I first started, when I first got into this, you know, um, back in like 95, I didn't. Uh, I, I was leaving the military behind. I was like, you know, that's that's a whole different chapter in my life. I'm moving into a new chapter. None of that exists right now. I'm all about being an artist. Uh, but, you know, I can look back now and go, oh, I, was, I was waking up every morning at 6 a.m. to work out when I first started. And everybody else, young actors that I knew back then, they were sleeping till 11, 12 noon. You know, 11 o'clock in the morning, 12 noon, or some of them beyond. Uh, and you know, they're, not everyone's careers worked out the same way mine did. And, the, and some of these people were people that before I was out of the military, I was watching them on television. And you know, when I met them, I was like, "Wow, you're, you know, you're that guy." And, and your friends, we're friends now. It's crazy. So, but you know, sometimes you know, some of those people's careers have not because you know, I think the discipline and initiative of of uh, trying to um, better yourself, better your career, and always stay. Um, uh, relevant, you know, always, you know, relevant as far as like, you know, this town is fickle. They gotta, you gotta be in their faces, and you gotta be in their faces. Like, hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm good at this, and I'm, I'm continuing to get better, and I'm always learning, and I'm, and I'm willing to learn from you, or I'm willing to, you know, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, that's that's very important. That's a very important aspect of my career, and how I've been able to, um, you know, continue to, to grow and continue to. Um, I think, you know, be successful, I guess. Um, and I think it's all about that part of me from the military, you know, that, that, that really um, kept me going. There's been times when it wasn't so, wasn't so great, you know, wasn't so, I wasn't working so much. And, you know, that's when you go, I'm going to quit. I'm going to go do something else and, and give up. And, and, uh, but, I, you know, I, I, I couldn't. There was part of me that, that just couldn't quit. Mm -hmm.